Hello and welcome to Navani Melor and Fury Video. I'm Shergok, your host, and today we are going to take a closer look at which Japanese guy with an extremely large mana bar would win in a battle against one another. But before we're going to take a closer look at any of this, let me quickly thank my Patreons for supporting this channel and say my thanks to all users of the YouTube Thanks function for making one-time donations. And with that said, let's get to the topic at hand. Ein Solgon is the undead overlord of the great tomb of Nazareth, and like Grudius Greyrat, he is a fantastic caster. However, just as Eins is not the best caster in his setting, but does have an enormous mana bar, much to the delight of characters like Shelty and Albedo, Rudius is basically the same, except for being undead. And nonetheless, Eins would likely win a fight against the current Rudius, because Eins has several significant advantages over him, and the first would be his immense physical resilience compared to a normal human. A resilience that allowed him to withstand direct hits from Sheltier Bloodfallen and other powerful opponents. Rodius likely wouldn't survive such attacks or would need a lot of feeling magic to endure them afterwards. So he would basically be taken out by just one good hit from Ein Solgon. Additionally, Eins, who can think tactically and deceive his opponents, has an enormous advantage in combat, while Rudius is a threat to Eins with his massive mana reserves and his immense magical power. Without magic, Rudius is just a human. One misstep, and he's done for, while Eins can stomach a few hits. So this heavily favors Eins. But to be sure that he would win, it would be wise for Eins to counter Rudius' magical power and mana reserves with his own magic. And even if both of them exhaust their magic at the same time, Eins would still be able to fight on a physical level, while Rudius would be just an ordinary human without further advantages, while again Eins Ulgon would remain an undead overlord with enough physical strength to crush humans without any buffs just like he did crush Clementine eventually, while again still fighting as a caster. And Clementine is much stronger than Rudius on a purely physical level. Also Ein's reflexes and perception are supernaturally sharp, making him faster and stronger than Rudius. And he could see and track Rudius even in the dark, thanks to his dark vision which would spell the doom for any mana exhausted Rudius at his current power level. Well, of course, Eins won't feel physical exhaustion and stamina loss since he is also undead. So just as he did with Clementine, Eins would likely crush Rudius effortlessly in the most literal sense if it comes to a pure physical fight. Furthermore, Ein Solgon has two magical advantages that one must be able to counter to stand a chance against the undead overlord. The first is a counter against time magic, like time stop, which would otherwise allow Eins to defeat Rudius before he can even react. And the second advantage is his death magic, as one must be able to withstand spells like grass part or true death. In other words, Eins could finish Rudius with a single attack, even if Rudius manages to counter a spell or two initially. Even if the attack is just ordinary attack magic, like a well-placed fireball. Now, Rudius might try to use disturb magic to counter Eins Ulgon's spells, which might work at first. Again, Shizu Delta was able to do basically the same with just a good physical hit, but Eins can cast spells simultaneously, as in tripling and doubling them. Thus, he would increase the chance that at least one spell will get true. And again, a single hit from Eins would completely annihilate Rudius, especially since spells like Vagmeyer, that Rudius is specialized in, would be ineffective against the undead Eins Ulgon. 
giving him the opportunity to land a surprise hit against Rudius, despite Rudius' eyes. So yes, as Rudius is now, he would be dead. Of course. This brings us to a major spoiler warning, because obviously Rudius Gireirat will grow stronger over time. And an invention will significantly boost his combat power, the magical armor he, Zanoba and Cliff will create, albeit with some divine help from Hitogami. There are also two, well, actually four versions of the armor, but we will only take a look at two of them, Mark 1 and Mark 2. So let's begin with the Mark 2 armor. This basically plate armor grants Rudius the strength and the reflexes and the speed of a sword saint in close combat, meaning he could compete with individuals like Gaius, Eris or Nina Farion at their current strength level in anime when it comes to a pure physical combat. Additionally, he would still have his immense mana reserves and his magic potency and his wide array of spells to fight Ein Sulgon. So he would essentially stop being squishy and therefore this battle would be much more interesting as Eins would be equally matched with Rudius in close combat. So Eins at least initially would be on the defensive using his substantial health pool and his strong magical defense to gradually deplete Rudius' mana reserves, simply speaking, since Rudius' magic armor needs mana to work and to defend him. And since Eins is way more resistant to spells and physical attacks, thanks to his high magical defense and at least decent physical defense and his great health pool, and thanks to his gear that for example grants him immunity to fire magic, like total immunity, Eins would come out the top of this war of attrition. Naturally, Eins would also need to protect himself from spells like Rudius' nuclear version of Fireball, which he can do with a spell you have already seen. Now, to put Rudius under pressure, Eins would likely summon hordes of skeletons and particularly death knights, since death knights would always require two hits to be defeated. And all of this will eat into Rudius's mana pool in order to eventually exhaust it and just defeat him after he can't fuel his armor via mana anymore. Because then he would be defenseless against Ein Solgon. But this fight would require significantly more effort from Eins. And also a lot of undead helpers that basically act as meat or rather bone shields. And of course this would greatly strain Ein Solgon's mana reserves and would likely push him a fair bit. Like he would not be in any real danger but he would basically have to fight very strategically and conceal his true strength. And of course it is very very unlikely that Ein Solgon would get a lucky hit in and just defeat Rudius in one attack since his magic armor would protect him. And with that said, let's talk about the real thing. Let's talk about the Mark I armor, which also closely resembles Azut Eindra's own armor, the armor of reinforcement, and which actually might have been the inspiration behind the armor of reinforcement that Azut Eindra wears. And like Azut's armor, it also has a Gatling gun, but one that shoots extremely hard stone projectiles, we are talking about nearly full metal jackets the size of ogre schlongs here, not just ordinary stone, which of course will cause blunt damage, which is Ein Solgon's greatest physical weakness. Additionally, the armor has a stone in the hand, known as the Stone of Absorption, which Rudy acquired from the defeat of the Hydra. And Rudy, as the name suggests, can absorb mana and spells with this stone of absorption by basically using his own mana to neutralize any mana from any spell. In other words, not only is Eins physically now much weaker than the armor, but his own magic can now be neutralized in two ways, by casting disturb magic and via the stone of absorption, thus giving him a huge disadvantage in terms of magic and ranged combat alike. Moreover, the armor plates of Rudius Gundam can self-repair 
and its interiors fitted with feeling wounds that continuously will heal Rudius when he is sit and injured. The armor's immense mana throughput and the runes in the inside might also grant immunity to time magic and death magic, as Rudius's defensive stats would be too high for Einzulgon's death magic to come through. However, Einzulgon could still use Grass Part to stun Rudius for one or two seconds, because the thought of having one's own heart grabbed and almost crushed by an undead overlord would naturally shock any living being. And that's actually a secondary effect of Grass Part, even if the spell fails, it stuns living beings. Eins would use these precious seconds to summon high-level undead, like a Grim Reaper Thanatos or a Death Emperor, along with as many mid-level undead as possible to keep Rudius occupied. He would then try to cast the goal of all life is death to annihilate Rudius with a buffed and therefore unblockable death spell. If that doesn't work, I can imagine Eins focusing on depleting as much mana from Rudius as possible before engaging in close combat, because Eins Ulgon can fight as an actual physical fighter, as a max level warrior, with his spell Perfect Warrior. And he has weapons comparable at the very least to Galfarion's legendary swords, putting him, I would say at the very least, in the King Tier class of sword fighting. He, of course, would also have access to much more weapons than just simple swords, forcing Rudius to consume a lot of mana in close combat. And if Rudius completely runs out of mana before he can finish off Einzulgon, then he would be once again defenseless, and Einzulgon could win. However, such a duel would be truly hard to predict, and Rudi might have weakened Einzulgon enough, with his stone cannons and his getting barrages, to finish him off before his own mana runs dry. Especially because he can essentially summon giant rock meteors in order to crush Einzulgon, so he can inflict magical damage that is also crush damage, which again Einzulgon is very vulnerable and weak to. So I would say that the outcome is open in this very last battle. And finally, Rodius' sword could also severely injure Eins, even in his perfect warrior mode, as the stronger the defense of the opponent gets, the greater the damage output of his weapon will be, and therefore Rodius Greyrat would basically have another ace in his sleeve. And with that said, now it's your turn. What do you think about the likely battle outcome of Rodius and Eins? Let me know it down in the comment section. And while you type, I say thank you very much for watching and special thanks to Dash Dash Dash, Arda Daddy Arda, ASK, Bad Guy Yi, Bad Burrito 316, Bisa, Ben C, Brandon D, Chrissy, Crowley 0221, Sia, Crystal Prime, Dead Slime, Death is Mercy, Deathless Dragonlord, Demon Xenomorph 1987, Devin Downen, Ding Dong, Din Pep, Dragonlord Placido Saxophone, Duckwagon, Dunkler Krieger, Dystopia, Dystopia II, Enigmatic Unicorn, Theralchivan, Guy with Dead Head, Hector Marino, Hoss, Huster, Jacob G, Jana B, Jason, J. Morris, Chromius, Kyle R, Lee K. Long, Legendarius, Lelouch wie Britannia with a mustache, Lexus Fox, Lord Nishikian Rai, Lord Touch Me, Love Razor, Merovec, Mr. Shoes, Mr. Tweaker, Michael R, Michael Y, Nope, Oh Hell No, Normal Toad, Oh Kill, Overlord General Gasper, Paddy Pantom, Personage, Primus Eleven, Rhinomir, Cune Caracos P, Shergox's Daddy, Shadow Lightning Wolf, Shrine Keeper, Sir Axolotl, Super Tier Magic Batista Bomb, Supreme Cheese, Staris, Ted, Texas Deer, The Orc Warboss, Rocket Smasher, T.E. Wang, 
Wer Schorkai, Vegito 27, Venture Fanatic, Wilhelm, Zinukai, and Sonnegorn. Thanks, guys. Anyway, have a nice day, and I hope to see you soon on my very next video.